Exploring Blocks on the Blockchain Infographics can only explain a blockchain on a high-level view. But the best way to learn about blockchain is by actually interacting and observing the actual chain. We can observe and interact with a blockchain through something called a block explorer. These are usually websites and services that exposes what's happening on the actual network. Etherscan is an example of an Ethereum-based blockchain explorer. Many different blockchain explorers can exist for the same network because remember, this is not the actual blockchain. Because a blockchain doesn't exist on a central place, remember it is spread across the globe with different nodes working on the same network. A block explorer is simply a UI, a front end for us to interact and look at transactions on what's happening on the nodes. This is possible because of the transparency of the blockchain. We get to see each and every transaction and block that was ever created. And we'll explore this in this video. Now, like I said, for this course, we are focused on Ethereum and EVM based blockchains. So, we are now looking at Etherscan, which gives us the view of the Ethereum blockchain. But you can also use something like blockchain.com to see what's happening on the Bitcoin blockchain and look at all the transactions that's taking place. As you can see, there are many different blockchain explorers, but we'll stick with Etherscan because this is focusing on the Ethereum blockchain. Etherscan gives us a very rich UI filled with information from the blockchain. But don't get overwhelmed at this stage. Throughout the course, we'll jump back to Etherscan to fully understand the whole tool. For now, just focus on the parts in each section. Let's understand the homepage UI. At the very top, we have this beautiful search bar. In this search bar, you can search for almost anything that's on the blockchain, from tokens, token hashes, and your own account details, what's happening on smart contracts, and much, much more. You usually search for a hash in here, but literally you can type in any keywords. This will become very important as we progress with your development journey. Next, we have this header section over here, which displays the information of the entire chain. For example, what the current price in dollars are of the currency Ether on the Ethereum network. Then, the total amount of transactions that's ever taken place. Then the average gas price in GUE. Don't worry about gas for now, we'll discuss that in a later topic. We have a history graph, a market capitalization of all the money inside of the Ethereum network, and then the last finalized block, as well as the last safe block. Finalized blocks are just blocks that can never be changed. And safe blocks are just blocks that is unlikely to be reverted. And then we get to an interesting section, the latest blocks and the latest transactions. If you remember from the previous video, the latest transactions are the data that's being stored on the blockchain. And the latest blocks, these are the blocks that's being formed to ensure that the data stays on this blockchain forever. When it comes to Ethereum, transactions could range from simple transfer of Ether, the native token, or contract interactions. We'll take a closer look at transactions when we discuss accounts and wallets. For now, just know that this is the data that's being stored on these blocks. And if you can see on the timestamp on this transaction over here, it's 13 seconds ago. The same with this one, this one, and this one, and so on. And if you look on the block side, this very first block was created 13 seconds ago and the next one was created 25 seconds ago. This means that the very first block contains all of these transactions that was created 13 seconds ago because this data was captured and stored in this very block. In fact, if we look at this field over here, we can see that there are exactly 153 transactions in this block. The amount of transactions, as you can see, varies for each block. But let's understand the rest of the fields. The first field over here is called the block height. This is the latest block that was created. These block height numbers follow sequentially on top of each other. And whenever a new block is created, this number increments. The fee recipient is the validator node that actually got the fee. 
and here we can see the block reward. And that's as simple as what a block is on this level. We can now deep dive into how the block looks, but I also want to show you a different way of getting to the block view. If you go here to the blockchain, you can click on view blocks. This will give us a better overview of the blocks created. There's a lot more data on each block, like gas use, gas limits, which we'll get to. I want to quickly point to the recipient. Over here, this recipient is the validator or the pool that got the reward and they have names, Builder, OX69, and so on. But behind the scenes, the fees are not sent to this name. If we hover over this name, we can see an account. This will explain in the next video, but just know that behind the scenes, this always sends to an address like this. So now let's actually explore the block even further by going ahead and clicking on its block height. This will give us the most detail on a block. We can refer to this as the block level information. Now without going into too much detail on what all these fields are, because with time we will understand all of it, we see things like the block height and all the transactions that's in this block. And a very special thing that I want to show you is that if we go to the very bottom and click on more, we can see something familiar. If you can remember from the previous infographic that we saw, here is the hash of this block. All the data that's in this block made up this unique hash. And here is the previous hash. In this case, it's referred to as the parent hash. What does this mean? Well, it means that this block is connected to this one over here. So if we click here, we should see this block that came before the other one. And as we can see, here is its hash and this is its previous block. So I wanted to show you this because this kind of binds the concept of the infographic to exactly what we see in the real world. The infographic also showed the data stored inside the block. And here we can see it on the transaction field. If we click there, we can see here's all the transactions. More on transactions later on. For now, I just wanted to introduce you to Etherscan, a blockchain explorer, because this will be the place where we spend most of our time interacting and observing the blockchain. And as the course goes on, we're always going to come back here to implement and practice what we've learned.